Each fall, Darren and I get a lot of questions about, hey, should I be putting nitrogen out in the fall or should I just wait until spring? Or for that matter, how much can I put on safely in the fall? So we want to kind of talk through those issues today. Ah, this fall application topic. You know, when we think about nutrients, a lot of times it's P and K that we're putting on in the fall because frankly, they don't move very much in the soil. So big deal. We put them out in the fall, they're still going to be there in the spring. With nitrogen, it gets to be a little bit iffy because of course, in the nitrate form where it has a negative electrical charge, it can move down through soil. Why is that possible? Well, because soil has a negative charge. So if we've got the wrong form of nitrogen, things could get ugly pretty fast out on the farm. Basically, nitrogen is in two different forms in the soil typically. We're talking nitrate and ammonium. Those are the two main forms that we like to discuss on the farm. Well, the nitrate has a negative charge, soil has a negative charge, so the soil is literally repelling that nitrate and pushing it right out. Now, unfortunately, nitrogen can change forms in the soil. You've got bacteria, uh, and it changes a lot depending on heat. And also, I, let me just say this. There are a lot of people that say, once it's 50 degrees in the fall and the temperature is falling, you're safe to put nitrogen on. That's not true. Nitrogen is going to continue converting at least a little bit to other forms because bacteria don't just stop when it's 50 degrees. They don't just say, well, time to check out. No it's all the way down to 32 degrees. Once you're at 32 degrees, then there's basically almost nothing in terms of nitrogen conversion. So what I'm trying to say is, is 50 a good temp to start at for fall applications of nitrogen? Yeah, that's pretty good. But what would be better is 45. What would be better yet is 40. What would be even better is 35. You see where I'm going with this. Not until you get to 32 are you actually really safe. Well, this is a big deal because, you know, when you start harvest out, people want to get things done. Hold your horses just a little bit. Maybe there's some other jobs that can be done and the fertilizer thing could be put off as long as possible. The other thing is going to come down to what form of fertilizer you're going to put out in the field and how you're going to protect it. Brian mentioned the ammonium form of nitrogen versus the nitrate form. Well, keeping products in the ammonium form longer, even if you choose the right product, stabilizers can certainly help. When we look at anhydrous ammonia, there are things like NSERV that can be used uh, in other forms of nitrogen, like urea, for example, you could use something like an agrotane or an instinct. Uh, even manure, when you're putting that out on, in the field in the fall, uh, that can be stabilized and protected. Products like more than manure or instinct too could be used to, to help keep those nutrients safe from leaching and from tie up in the field. But in addition to using a nitrogen stabilizer, you have to use the right form. So for example, we don't recommend you use liquid 28% at all in the fall. We're not real big believers in using urea at all in the fall. The only form of nitrogen that we will use on our own farm in the fall is anhydrous ammonia because that quickly converts over to ammonium and basically locks, in, locks onto your soil. So as long as you do this shortly before freeze up, you're usually relatively safe. But let's talk about the general rule we always have for how much nitrogen can your soil really hold. Well, take a look at your cation exchange capacity, or CEC for short. Take 10 times your CEC, that'll tell you roughly how much nitrogen your, your soil can hold at any one time. So if you've got a CEC of 12, 12 times 10 is 120. So 120 pounds is the most I would be willing to put on that soil at any one time. And for that matter, uh, I really probably wouldn't even put that much on because there's usually some nitrogen already in the ground. So if I can hold 120 and I've already got 30 in the soil, that means I should only apply about 90 pounds. Well, the other thing is where you're going to apply it. So Brian talked a little about soil type, but on our farm, we're really looking at where does this land lay? Now, if we've got upland ground that we know isn't going to flood and we know we're going to get out there early in the spring, that's a good spot for fall nutrient applications. When we've got ground that's low lying and even if you say, well, it only floods one out of 10 years, who knows, this could be the year that it happens. And you know what? The economics just aren't that great right now that we can just waste a whole bunch of money out on the farm. The other side of it too is environmentally speaking, we really don't want to do things that, that aren't prudent on our farm. So when you've got low-lying ground, that's definitely not a place for fall nutrient applications, which is really common sense and everybody already knows. Well, once again, I guess we just want to stress to you, hey, take a look at your cation exchange capacity. You don't want to exceed in terms of nitrogen application, what your soil can hold. But then be smart about where you're applying your nitrogen, use a nitrogen stabilizer, and use the right form of nitrogen for the right situation. 
And if you are putting nitrogen out in the fall, it may help you with your burn down on weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 